Kerr9000's Game Room. Hi, it's Kerr9000 and welcome to my games room. Today I'll be talking about Splatterhouse 2. You see, I have a bit of a history with masks, don't I? Yeah. And I'm used to a dark mask trying to tell me what to do. Trying to find its way onto my face. And trying to get me into trouble. Much like Rick, the guy in this game, who makes a deal with an evil possessed mask because it tells him that he can get his girlfriend back through the power it will give him. Nah. Not now. I firmly put the mask behind me. And now we are going to get on to the game. So Splatterhouse 2, known in Japan as Splatterhouse Part 2, is a gory beat-em-up video game which was developed by a company called Now Production and published by Namco for the Sega Mega Drive or as our American cousins call it, the Sega Genesis in 1992. It's the sequel to the original Splatterhouse which was in the arcade as well as being on the Turbo Graphics. And it's sort of the third instalment in the Splatterhouse series. You see there was this Japanese Famicom game called Splatterhouse Wapaku Graffiti, but if you take that out of the way, it's the second in a trilogy of games. Basically, to tell the story of it, three months have gone by since the events of the first game, and Rick, the protagonist, is still suffering from his guilt of being unable to save Jennifer, his partner, and he's been plagued by nightmares of her and the Terror Mask. And the mask reappears to Rick and tempts him to find the house, telling him that, with its help, Jennifer can be saved. It says that it can give Rick the power. The gameplay in Splatterhouse is very similar to the original game. You control Rick going through eight different stages, and basically you're on a flat plane, Moving, usually from left to right, absolutely battering monsters with either your fists or weapons that you pick up. And when I say battering, I mean absolutely battering. You will swing a bar and smash a monster's brains all over the wall. And it doesn't end there. There are like grotesque hanging babies who you'll punch to death. And there's monsters who, when you've... This is a boss, when you've dispatched him, giving him a good poof, poof, his guts will splatter all over the floor. The game really is well named. And it is a very adult game. If you're a fan of things like Jason, Michael Myers, then you're probably really going to appreciate that for once you are actually playing the sort of masked killing badass instead of running away from them. It's a very simple game, which is challenging. And sometimes you'll feel like you've been hit a little bit unfairly. I'm not going to say the hit detection's perfect, but the more you play it, you sort of pick out the patterns of how these monsters bounce around the screen, when to attack low, when to attack high. The more you play it, the further you'll get. And I think that some of the repetitiveness is kind of papered over with the gore. The game's main problem, which prevents it from being a standout 10 out of 10 classic to me, is that it is kind of repetitive and in a way a little bit sluggish. But... Now, the game's main strength, as far as I'm concerned, is the atmosphere. The music combined with the graphics and the gore, the style, it really does feel like it's a playable horror game. You feel like there's a real world there and real peril. And I think they've done an amazing job with this. And... If you like your horror films, you are far more likely to get a lot out of this game. But I do think it is just held back from greatness by some repetitiveness and some clunky hit detection. 
but I will still give Splathouse an 8 out of 10. I think it is an amazing game. And this and the first one particularly are excellent if you are into your horror. There was also a, I was going to say recent, but it must be about 10 years ago now, remake, which I think uh, deserves looking at as well. Anyway, that's Kerr 9000 signing off, saying, enjoy your games, enjoy your horror films, and don't take any orders from evil masks. Take care of yourself and each other. Latest taters. A Squiffy Bear Production. Hi, it's Kerr9000, the Chrome Face Man. I'd just like to say thank you for making it to the end of my video. I've got lots of stuff on my channel. My horror house doing horror reviews, games room doing games, sci-fi station. It's absolutely chock a block full. I can also be found on the Retro Gamer U forum, which is full of great people, great laugh. At the end of this video, there's going to be some little icons to tick if you want to subscribe, a link to one video, a link to a playlist. I'd also like to recommend the wonderful, talented Just Jessica, who does cosy games like Dreamlight Valley, and is my supportive partner. Thank you ever so much, once again, for watching my video, and particularly if you follow me, thank you for all your support, and have a great rest of your day.